Hello and welcome to this video mini-series. This is the part one of Journey of an App, where we'll be showing how to move an application from a Windows Server 2012 R2 running on-premises to a container running all the way in Azure Kubernetes Services, or AKS. My name is Vinicius Apolinario. I'm a senior program manager in the Windows Containers team. And let's get started by showing what we have today. So here I have a Windows Server 2012 R2 server running on-premises, and I have IIS installed, and my application is already deployed here. If you wanna try out this process using the same application that I'm using, you can also do that using the application Vinibeer that is available on my GitHub. You can see the link and the details on how to deploy this in the, the, uh, in the blog post that is accompanying this video. Like I said, this is a video series where we'll be showing how we're going to take this application all the way from this IIS server, deploying in a container, validating that the application is working correctly. We'll be pushing this application to Azure Container Registry, and then we'll be deploying this on Azure Kubernetes Service. So in this first video, we'll be showing how to containerize the application itself using Windows Admin Center. To get started, let's, let's actually check if the application is running correctly. So as you can see, the application is deployed just like any IIS website. I can open my browser here and then can navigate to the localhost. And if I open, for example, the calculator page, it shows me that this uh, page at least is working fine. Uh, if you're not familiar with this application, basically what it does, the application calculates how much sugar uh, you have to put in in your uh, home brewing process for brewing beer at home. So depending on the style of the beer that you have, for example, I have this half of in here. Uh, let's say the temperature of the room that I'm going to be storing this up, this beer uh, is 70 degrees, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make at home five gallons. There you go. The application is processing for me. Everything is fine. Just so you know, this application is part of a sample of an old sample ASP.NET application running um, in Windows Server 2012 or 2. It could be running in 2016 or even all the way back to 2008 or 2. So that's just to show that my application is actually running fine. It's running on premises, as I mentioned, and I want to modernize this application using Windows containers. The first step that I'm gonna use in particularly this process is to actually export the application from IIS. Depending on the application you have, if it's not IIS, there will be many ways to export your application. In the case of IIS itself, we can use Web Deploy to do that because now Windows Admin Center can actually read the zip file from a Web Deploy and actually create the container image all the way from the zip file to the container image working. Uh, I'm gonna explain that in a second. So for now, let's just export the application. So to do that, I have Web Deploy installed along with IIS. So I can click Export, Export Application when I select the application itself. And what Web Deploy will do is to actually look at the deployment of the application on IIS, which is this one. And then it will also look at the file system where the application is actually stored. So you can see that I have all the files of my application sitting in whatever um, folder it's sitting in the server. Web Deploy will take care of that. And I can go ahead and click Next. Here are the parameters for the uh, server that is a destination on which this um, application is going to be imported then. In the case of, uh, uh, in our case, is the container itself. So in this case, this application is a very simple application. It's just a ASP.NET web application, but doesn't have a uh, database connection, for example. Uh, your application might have one. So one of the things you want to check is, do you want to keep talking to the same SQL server or the database connection that you have? Or once you move the application to a container, do you need to change the database connection? You can actually do that here in the container that you have at the end of the day, we actually follow the configuration of the web deploy itself. So I can, for example, add a parameter, and then I can select what is the connection string, what is the uh, value for that database connection string that I'm configuring, if it's a SQL uh, Express, a SQL database, whatever database it is that you have a configuration, you can change or you can actually keep the same configuration. Uh, you, you would see the configuration for the database connection here if you had that configured already. Uh, very well, I can go ahead and click Next. I can select where I'm going to deploy this, and I actually have a file here, so I'm gonna skip this for now. Let me just show you the file that I have. 
uh, web deploy generates a zip file once that wizard finishes. Um, and then all you have to do in the case of containerizing the, the application with Windows Admin Center is copy this uh, zip file to your container host. So that's it for the IIS portion. Uh, I'm gonna come back in the container host and Windows Admin Center opened. All right, so here we are now in a container host. This container host is actually running Windows Server 2019. It could be running a SAC release of Windows Server uh, that doesn't have an UI, and then it could open Windows Admin Center via Windows 10. Uh, there are many ways you can actually deploy Windows Admin Center and then connect to the container host that you wanna deploy your container, or at least validate the container, because at the end of the day, what we wanna what we want do here is we wanna run this application on Azure Kubernetes Services or AKS. So remember the zip file that we just exported from the old Windows Server 2012 R2 server? Uh, that's the file here. I just copied from that old server to this new one. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open Windows Admin Center. And as you can see, I'm targeting this container host, which in my case is also the server that is actually running Windows Admin Center. Because this is a container host, the containers extension shows up and I can see the summary, the containers I have running, I have the images, networks, and volumes. I have many uh, options for managing containers now through Windows Admin Center. We covered that in a previous video. So today I'm gonna to show you specifically for web deploy, how can we actually take that zip file and run it in, um, uh, in a container. So to get started, uh, as you can see, I selected the images tab. I have multiple images here. I can click the create new because that's what we wanna do. We wanna create a new container image based on that file that we exported. So for now, as you know, we have only IIS web application. In the future, we'll be adding other options here. And I also have, what is the source of my application type? And this is the important thing that we have to change now. And notice the Docker file preview that we have here in the bottom, it will change depending on what the configuration that I select. For example, if I have a static web application folder, this is a simple Docker file. If I have a ASP.NET solution file from Visual Studio, um, as soon as I select where is my source for the Visual Studio file, the Docker file, preview will change here. In our case, what we have is we have a web deploy exported zip file. So I'm gonna select this option. I'm gonna select the location where the zip file resides. And once I do that, let's select the VinnyBeer folder. I'm gonna select the file here and I click OK. And as you can see, the Docker file changed dramatically now because at the end of the day now, we changed the type of application that we're deploying. So now um, I have like, for example, what is the base image that we'll be using for this? Uh, I have all the configuration that actually goes and deploy, web deploy itself to IIS. So we can go and actually restore the package and basically what, what I have to do, to do here is I have to select what is the framework version I wanna use. In my case, I can use the 4.8, uh, but if, you're, if you have a really old application, you can even run the 3.5. You can run all the way back there. Uh, in my case, 4.8 will work, so that's it. I can select if I have any additional scripts. So if your application, when you deploy it, you require that, I don't know, you wanna change the folders, you wanna run whatever it is, and you have a PowerShell script to do that, you can select that here. So let's put a name to this. I'm gonna call it WD, just because it's from web deploy. And then what is the tag I wanna use? I'm gonna call it V1. And let's just review the Docker file here. Looks fine, I don't wanna make any uh, manual changes, but I could if I wanted to. Uh, I'm gonna click build and I'm gonna be back in a second because this process takes about a minute or two and then I'm gonna cut this from the video. All right, so as you can see, the container image was created successfully. Uh, I have the details here, but I can pretty much close this tab now. You can see that the image is here. I can click the image and see the details of the image that I just created. I can now actually to validate that the application is running properly inside a container. Once I run a container based on this container image, I can directly from Windows Admin Center run a new container. 
So I'm going to click Run. I don't have to specify a container name. Docker can do that for me. The only thing that I have to do in the options that you see here is actually provide a port. And the reason for that is because in my case, I'm actually using network address translation, uh, which is the, a NAT network for Docker. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to map a port, the port 8082 from the host to the port 80 of the container itself. So this is just so we can access the container uh, and the application running inside of it through the container host. I'm going to click run. This should take just a few seconds. And there you go. I have now a container instance running from this container image. I can go back to the containers tab. You can see that I have this container running here. I have the details of the container down here. So I can expand and see it's using this much memory. It's using this much network IO and then uh, the port 8082 is mapped. So in order to validate that the application is running, let's go check in another tab. So I'm going to open localhost port 8082 uh, slash Vini beer, which is the application that we actually imported. And this should open the application in just a second. There you go. The application continues to run. So just to validate, let's open that page that we uh, that we showed before. It's running correctly. So let's select one here just to see if the application is running correctly. Uh, five gallons. As you can see, the calculation here that the page does continues to run fine. Uh, which means that my application is running uh, correctly. So basically, just to recap what we did here, we had a Windows Server 2012 R2, we had IIS running on there, we have an application running on premises on that server on IIS, and we exported the application using Web Deploy. From that, we generated a zip file, which is this one, and using Windows Admin Center in the Images tab here on the Containers extension, uh, we have a nicer UI now to actually go and create new container images uh, through multiple ways. One of the ways now that you can actually create a container image using Windows Admin Center is using a web deploy uh, exported zip file. One of the things that is interesting here is remember the Docker file that I showed you when we were actually performing the process of creating the container image? Well, it's right here. You can actually reuse this Docker file if you need. You can um, integrate this with your DevOps uh, pipeline uh, and you can reuse this Docker file now for whatever you want. But the most important thing is actually that we have now a container running locally that actually uh, have the same application that I had in a virtual machine. Now I have inside of a container. So that's it for the first video of this video series. Uh, I'll see you next week where we're going to look at how to get this container image that we created via Windows Admin Center and push it to a Azure container registry in Azure. And then just to check uh, that the container continues to run in there, we are going to use Azure Container Instance. But our ultimate goal in this video series is to actually show you how to deploy this in Azure Kubernetes Services. So I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching and see you next time.